Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is designed to give you all the feedback that you need on that second urban challenges assessment that you've just recently sat. Now remember the second urban challenges assessment was all about the case studies and the examples of things that we use to do with London. Remember these tests have two purposes. The first purpose is so that you guys know exactly what you need to do in order to improve for the future. It tells me what you know and what you need to know but it also helps with your essential exam technique to make sure that you pass the exam with flying colours. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each question, one question at a time. It's going to be your job uh, to annotate your paper as I'm going through each question in each mark scheme. Then at the end of this video you are going to um, complete your self-assessment form and then you're going to redo the assessment and re-annotate it with the correct answers so that you guys know where you went wrong and what you need to do in order to improve for next time. Remember you can pause, rewind, stop, um, have another look at this video at any point and if you've got any questions you can either send me an email or you can come and find me. So the first two questions then were questions which required you to use your skills in looking at graphs. Um, now this particular question told you to study figure 15.8 which you can see up there on the screen in front of you. Now this is a bar graph uh, which as the title suggests shows us London's population growth since 1801. You then got four statements. Two of those statements are true, two of those statements are not true. The correct answers to this uh, are that um, London's population was at 8.2 million um, in 2011 and you can see that just here at the top of the graph just here where my mouse cursor is uh, and 8.2 obviously the total of our population. The second statement that was true uh, was that London's population has declined between 1951 and 1971 and you can see that on the graph here you've got that nice little steep decline okay now that's quite an easy question re re uh, sorry as long as you read the question properly you look at the graph and you read through each of the different statements it should be a nice easy two points in the bag now some of you didn't get any marks whatsoever for this question the simple reason was you didn't recognize it as a question because there weren't lines for you to write on you really need to make sure that you read absolutely everything in the question and that's why we're using that process of bugs boxing our command words underlining sequencing our answers to make sure that you guys get the best grade that you possibly can get now the next question was also a graph question but this time it asked you to look at kind of a pie chart really and um, which showed you the ethnic composition of London's population now this is a two mark question and it simply asks you to describe remember description is a really easy skill I could describe your school blazer as being green okay it's just based purely on my observations and it says describe what figure 15.10 reveals about London's ethnic diversity it's worth two marks now your two marks come from looking Looking at the general pattern that you can see on that particular graph. So in this case, you've got one mark for identifying that it is an ethnically diverse city. And then you get a second mark for using the data. Now, what I've done is I've typed up a little mini example up here in the right hand side. It says in London, there is a large mix of ethnic diversity. Well, that's probably enough to get you one mark. Then I've used the data and I've given an example. So e.g. 45% of the ethnic population are white UK and 12% of the population are South Asian. OK, you've got to make Make sure that you use the data. If they give you a graph, the data is on there for a reason. Okay, so have another go at that question if you didn't pick up both of those marks. The next question then is your six mark question. So this is slightly more difficult because you've really got to look at the command words that are available to you. Now this question says discuss how sustainable urban areas in HICs are. Now if I'm boxing my command word, my command word is discuss and discussion tells me that I need to form some sort of argument. I'm underlining the keywords within the question sustainable and HIC probably going to be quite important because if you waffled on about the Makoko floating school in Lagos that would answer the question had it said LIC and not HIC so you need to make sure that you're using the right example so discussion means you need an argument and I've put here two things that you need to do you need to identify the ways that they are not sustainable and the ways that they are in order to access the highest levels on the mark scheme and I'm going to show you that mark scheme in a moment remember sustainability is about balancing out the social 
the economic and the environmental impacts. And the case study example that you guys looked at for that was London's East Village, so where they've redeveloped post London 2012, the old Olympic Village, in order to be able to provide people with good quality, affordable housing. Okay, so that's something that you need to start focusing on looking at. Um, so in order to be able to pick up level three, which is your five to six marks, you'll notice it says AO3 there, and AO3 is your ability to be able to discuss. So you needed to have a well-developed discussion and balanced arguments, okay? And you needed to reach a conclusion. So even for a six mark question, you need to start looking at conclusions. And that balanced argument would have been, yes, these are the reasons why it's sustainable, and no, these are the reasons why they're not sustainable. For level two, you're picking up your AO1 and AO2 marks, okay? And this is about your knowledge and your understanding. So if you've got knowledge of a place and a location and environment, then that's probably enough to get you AO1, okay? And in order to hit AO2, you needed to balance out sides of both sides of the story. So you needed to explain how they are and are not sustainable, okay? And you'll notice down here you get two marks for your knowledge, two marks for your application and two marks for your ability to be able to discuss and form some sort of argument. Six mark questions seem to always be the same. So there's two marks for AO1, two marks for AO2 and two marks for AO3. And if you didn't get a discussion and reach a conclusion, the maximum amount of marks that you can access is four marks for that particular question. So it might be a case of going away and revising and having a look at the East Village example and having another go at that question, but actually pause this video and look at this mark scheme as you're doing it so that you know what the expectations are going to be for you for a six mark question when you go to an exam. Okay, finally, the nine mark bad boy. It says, evaluate the impacts of a regeneration project that you have studied. Nine marks. Okay, and I've put up there bugs. Remember, you need to be boxing your command words, underlining the key words, going back, reading it again, and then sequencing your answer. So in this case, the command word is evaluate. Now, usually with a nine mark question, you're going to get asked to evaluate. They might not write evaluate, they might write to what extent. Okay, or they might write discuss, but it means the same thing. You've got to have two sides of the story exact same as you did with that nine uh, sorry that six mark question previously I've underlined impacts now impacts can be positive and negative and if you're going to evaluate properly you need to be able to give both the positive and the negative impacts and it says there of a regeneration project that you have studied okay now our case study was looking at the Olympics in London 2012 that's your urban regeneration case study and that urban regeneration case study had social economic and environmental positives and negatives. So if I'm sequencing my answer, I'm probably gonna say that this is my case study, then I'm gonna highlight a couple of advantages, then I'm gonna highlight a couple of uh, disadvantages, I'm gonna use specific pieces of case study information. So I'm not just gonna talk generically, I'm gonna make it obvious to the examiner that I've learned about London 2012 as a regeneration project, and then I'm gonna draw some kind of conclusion. Are there more positive impacts or are there more negative impacts for that regeneration project? Now, this mark scheme that's in front of you is a nine mark, uh, a nine mark mark scheme. Now, you might be looking at it being a bit confused because it says here urban transport scheme, but actually the principle of the mark scheme is exactly the same. Rather than say an urban transport scheme, it could just say urban regeneration project. So if you look at that mark scheme, okay, and you have seen this before when you did a question based on Crossrail, um, AO1 demonstrates thorough and detailed knowledge of, of an urban transport scheme, or in your case, urban regeneration scheme. So you need to show off with those specific pieces of information that you really understand this case study. Then it says shows comprehensive understanding and effectiveness of it. So you're talking about both the advantages and the disadvantages to hit AO2. Okay, and then finally to hit AO3, you've got to be able to draw that conclusion on how effective the regeneration for London 2012 has been. Now some of you got some good pieces of specific information in there. I was reading things like the Carpenters Estate for some of the negatives, which is absolutely fantastic. That's where your revision is absolutely crucial because if you're not revising for these mini assessments, you're going to set yourself up to fail. Okay. Now remember, there's also spag marks that are available for these nine mark questions. So particularly geographical key terms, make sure you're spelling this spot on because that's three easy marks that you can start to pick up from. Okay. So now it's time for you to use your notes in your books to complete the self-assessment grid that I have.
hand out to you during lesson and I want you to redo this exam question. Now it might seem like a little bit of a bind but remember it's about practice and if we get this practice in by the time you guys get to the end of year 11 we will be sailing away with those GCSE exam grades. Okay. Remember rewind this video, have another look at it whilst you're going through your test paper and doing your self-assessment and you can ask me any questions at any time you like. Just ping me an email or find me at break and lunchtime. Okay, good luck.